Today, what's happening with North Korea and the United States? Well, North Korea now threatening to strike the U.S. territory in Guam, according to its state news agency. It's after President Trump's strongly worded warning to North Korea's leader over missile tests and nuclear threats. North Korea does not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire and fury like the world has never seen. Alarming to hear that kind of rhetoric coming from the mouth of a U.S. president, isn't it? Where are we here, Emily? Well, Kev, before uh, Trump made that statement, the Washington Post actually published an article uh, claiming that they've got their hands on this uh, report, uh, latest U.S. defense report. And then in this report, it claims that uh, the North Korea has developed a nuclear warhead small enough to fit inside a missile. And besides that, it also put a nuclear arsenal at 60 nuclear weapons, which mm. is a lot more than previously thought. Now, this Washington Post article, it didn't present any sort of evidence to show that they actually, the reporters in, in Washington Post, got their hands on this document. But despite that, it's been picked up by the American mainstream media. It's been widely reported. But besides uh, this Washington Post report, well, things really got to a boiling point on Tuesday when the U.S. flew two B-1B bombers over Guam uh, uh, with its allies in Japan and South Korea. And it's, it's, it's because it's after this drill that North Korea has issued a statement saying that they are considering to strike a U.S. base in Guam. Now, bear in mind that it's true. Throughout this year, North Korea has conducted numerous missile tests and it has angered the international community. But at the same time, while North Korea is flexing its military muscles, the U.S. has also significantly stepped up its military presence in the region. Mm -hmm. We're talking about sending an air, uh, air carriers conducting regular drills, sending in troops, and also fighter jets. And uh, so that's that's that. And in terms of rhetoric, uh, President Donald Trump, well, he's long been uh, adopted an aggressive uh, attitude towards North Korea, and some would even call it provocative. Take a listen to what he has been saying about North Korea in the past. The era of strategic patience with the North Korean regime has failed. Many years, and it's failed. The United States is prepared to use the full range of our capabilities to defend ourselves and our allies. One of our capabilities lies with our considerable military forces. Every military expert says there is no good military well, option. Uh, they're wrong. There is What's a military a option to destroy North Korea's program and North Korea itself. There's a chance that we could end up having a major major conflict with North Korea. Absolutely. Now, tensions on the Korean Peninsula really is higher than ever, and it's gone far beyond just a war for it. China and Russia have been calling for all sides to calm down and seek a political solution to this crisis unfolding there. And meanwhile, Australia and New Zealand also weighed in on what they thought about Trump's latest statement. Take a listen. Look, I think the comments are not helpful in an environment that's very tense. Uh, everyone wants to avoid military confrontation. The global community, led by the Security Council, including China and Russia, are all united in seeking to bring the maximum economic pressure on North Korea to bring them to their senses without conflict. Now, I have to wait and see whether or not Trump will take their advice, but certainly this situation in North Korea has got a lot of people worried in the international community. Yeah, Kevin. absolutely. Well, keep following that. Keep us posted this afternoon. Yeah, thanks, Emily. So as tempers rise and patience wears thin, here's some uh, expert reaction we've been hearing on where it may go then. What this can't be is an ego fight. And right now, what it felt like was a fight between Trump on one side and Kim on the other, and to see who can m make more outlandish statements. And the fear is that if somebody flinches, if somebody screws up, there could be hundreds of thousands of dead people here. This is a very real fight. This is shockingly dangerous. And the last thing we need to do is stand down and start bumping chests and talk about who's the bigger man. I think the North Koreans have put forth, look, we will stop our missile tests if you stop your war games. We've been doing war games on that peninsula for 50 or 60 years from now. So what good does it to walk away from that entry point into negotiations other than the fact that the United States simply does not want to really enter into negotiations. I think that's been the roadmap for the way the United States has conducted itself with adversaries throughout the last half century. With North Korea, it seems as if we are expecting them to put up so much first without 
the United States putting up anything. In this case, pulling back the war games is not a big concession because we can always just restart the war games.